Hi guys, the agenda for the discussion is as follows. Process for quality deliverables. So what is the process that needs to be followed for quality deliverables? And what is a quality deliverable? So let's uh, try to understand what's meant by a quality deliverable. A quality deliverable is something which meets the high satisfaction of the customer or the client. And also a quality delivery will be something which has a very low priority bugs or no bugs or leaked out to the production. So this is a quality deliverable. So let's see what is the process that needs to be followed for getting this quality deliverable or having this quality deliverable in place. So let's see if from the base of the requirements gathering to the end of the production deployment. So what is the process that needs to be ensured for achieving a quality deliverable? So at the very early stage of uh, gathering requirements, the product owner takes in the play, the product owner gathers the information from the client side guys, the support guys, and collects all the information, and then that describes everything that has been to be done into the product backlog. Once the product backlog is ready, they prioritize the product backlog based on the client requirements, uh, which is a high level requirement that needs to be delivered at the first and which needs to be delivered at the next. So based on this, the product owner describes the product backlog and prioritize them once the prior Prioritization has been completed. The backlogs items will be pulled out into the sprint backlog based on the priority, and they will be organized into um, items as such, which involves a high level, low level, and medium. So they divide them based on into each and everything. So they give they give some points for each and every feature or each and every user story. So based on the points like three, five, eight, eleven. So that ensure the points ensure the the points ensure how tough it is to build or implement that feature. So a very uh, critical or very tough solution or uh, user story that involves a tough solution is rated high. So it takes more time based on the time to deliver. Uh, the points will be assigned to each and every work item, the user story, and then it will be assigned to the corresponding guys. The dev and the QA guys. So now, he comes into play over here, and with the help of the product owner and the QA team, he prepares the acceptance criteria for the sprint user stories. And then comes the BA, the product owner, who drives the grooming session to ensure the team understood the features to be delivered in the current sprint. So, uh, if there are any questions uh, from the developers, QA, or BA, that is addressed by the product owner, and also some kind of use cases. Um, corresponding to the user source will be mentioned by the product owner and based on that that, the, that use case will be described into the user story by the BA. Once everything was clear, QA and the dev team gives the estimates for their activities um, corresponding to the task attached, they mention the estimates. So this helps in tracking the number of hours that has been estimated and the time taken for the completion of these user stories. So this helps us in analyzing what is actual and what is the estimated. So the difference can be analyzed clearly. So what this helps in, this helps in analyzing the velocity, the speed at which the user story have been developed or implemented and tested. So this helps in analyzing the velocity for the next sprints. Now the developer and the QA changes those work items into active state and start implementing and start preparing of the test cases and uh, they start up with the test design and picking up the regression short, etc. Once this has been done and uh, done parallelly, our development team has completed the implementation and they are ready for delivering it to the QA. They come, they do some unit testing and based on that unit testing, they ensure the quality of the build and once it was successful and they once they were satisfied, they are ready to deploy it into the test environment. Before that, once before this, one proper step has to be ensured. This process that if placed at this point in time, it ensures a very good quality of the product. And also it saves a lot of time for both uh, QA and the developers. 
So what is this step that needs to be implemented or the process that needs to be implemented over here? This is the first phase that the development team wanted to deliver the product. So wanted to deliver um, the changes for the enhancements that have been made. So in here, we need to walk through the features to the team along with the product owner. So what that can be ensured here if it does in place, it is implemented or incorporated into the process. So if it has been done, this ensures the implemented future was as expected by the product owner. So at the first place itself, the product owner gets ensured that, okay, this was what I was assuming, this was the feature I had been given and the developer has successfully developed the same feature. The same functionality has been developed. So this was ensured. And in the second level, there is always a chance for the product owner to sell some more changes over that. So it is an early stage that they can incorporate those changes rather than at the error at the very late stage before deploying it to the production, where it becomes very tough to test. It takes, uh, again, uh, some amount of time for testing. It's uh, all a waste of time. And the third was that the quality, bill, the quality of the bill was also ensured. So these three things are ensured with one step. If the BA is able to give a walkthrough of the features that have been implemented here, we have three successful items in place, three successful issuements done already. So this is the major thing that has to be incorporated in the testing, in the process of the SDLC lifecycle. Once it has been done, once the walkthrough was completed, the development team sends up a mail stating that the build release was, uh, uh, a build release mail will be ready. They will be sent up with the release notes containing uh, the features that are implemented and that have been deployed to the testing environment. Now the QA starts their work. So this is a point in time where QA delivery time begins for test execution. So QA picks up the user story, performs the basic sanity, which has already been ensured from BS walkthrough. So they does a basic, uh, uh, basic sanity and then they continue with executing the test cases that have been addressed for the user story and raises the issues of our failures, mentioning the environment, steps to reproduce and have for reference links uh, test cases to the bug and assign the bugs to the developers. So this ensures why there is one more question why, why they need to link the test case to the bug. So why exactly they need to do this? So if they does like linking the test case to the bug, so when we go through a uh, test case, for each and every test case, you can see the number of bugs that have been raised. So it ensures that number of times the test case has been failed is clearly depicted over there. And the next thing is that QA completed validation by executing all the test cases. Uh, some things might be failed, some things might be passed, some things might be blocked, and some things are not applicable. So now the QA changes the test completion report, the test summary report, execution summary report, and the bug summary report which includes the past, counter pass, fail, block, not applicable, and then bug summary report which includes, based on the priority, the new resolve or uh, closed bugs. And now the development teams in parallel already, they might have fixed some of the bug fixes and they might have tested and they're ready for deploying those bug fixes. So they are ready for phase two of the deployment of the build. So now the development team prepares a new build release notes, build to release notes, uh, build to email, Build to release mail with the release notes. This release notes contains some information. The information contained in it is the bugs that have been fixed and they're deployed into the test environment. So what happens? This helps in tracking the given fix at any the defined build. So if the same bug is reopened at some point later, we can track back the chain, track back to this build release notes and see where this exactly has been fixed earlier. So this allows us to track the number of bills. Also, also this this is a very uh, important thing. Why we need to mention so many times about the release mails. The release mails helps us in tracking the number of bills that have been released for each and every sprint. This is the major thing. So this ensures this has a, this source of or this makes the transparency of the build quality 
that is being delivered in each and every sprint. So the number of bills that is being increased, it implies the bill quality or the delivery or the bills that have been delivered to QA was very poor. So the lower the number of uh, bills that have been deployed, the higher the quality of delivery. So this will help us to track the number of times the bug fixes as I already mentioned. And next, bug fixes before uh, one more important process that needs to be incorporated was before as I need the bug fixes, their team will be doing the unit testing uh, for the fix that have made uh, made for the particular class file or the class or some of things that have been mentioned uh, done at the class level. So the unit test those class files and they leave it. So what happens now? Then they say that, yeah, we have completed our bug. We have fixed it. It works fine now. Deploy it. They verify the functionality. It works fine. So individual developer has done the same thing. Their bug fix are working fine. So at the last point of time, some developers have all uh, fixed their bugs and they have merged their fixes into these changes. And now there is a chance for the failure coming in now. So this developer will be ensuring his bug fix, but not the bug fix that has been ensured by the developer one. So in all of the breakages do not happen, developers had to ensure their bug fixes were working fine by at the last point of time before assigning all the bugs to the QA team, deploying it in the test environment. They need to ensure all the bug fixes they deployed are working fine now post merging all the bug fixes that have been developed by all the developers. Once all the collaborators have merged everything, how they need to really analyze, ensure the bug fixes are working. Else, there is always a possible chance that breaks up in the testing environment, the tester reopens the bugs because the developer one might have fixed it properly, but because of developers two's merge, it got broken. It was not understood by the developer one who had ensured that the fix was proper. But the tester doesn't understand all those things, he reopens the bug. So what needs to be attached while reassigning the bug back to the testing team? Diff of the commit that was made will act as a complete reference for the bug fix that has been done by the developer. One. Second thing is the information of the root cause that has been made by the dev team. So what happens if there is no root cause? If there is no root cause, there is no probable chance for the testing team <coughs> to analyze what went wrong. So he'll not be having any idea to get the root cause or to get to pick up the impacted areas. So if a proper root cause have been commented or some information of the root cause has been provided, well, uh, the dev task that has been being closed before assigning to the dev, uh, testing team, that really helps in analyzing the fix that has been given and the impacted areas you need to pick up for retesting to ensure that no breakage was done because of this fix. And finally, a review. As I told, a review from the reviewer is a great thing that needs to be done in place to ensure the quality of the bug fix. Where whenever a reviewer in place, the bug fix is always proper. If the review has been done properly. Might be the same, might be one one person has a wrong intention, but two people will always suffice to a proper and a valid release. So two people being in place will always allow us to get a proper bill or proper bug fix. So once all these things have been done, it adds to the bug, a diff, and then uh, some information on the root cause and the reviewer comments. Once this has been done, this has been mentioned properly, that needs to be reassigned the bug, needs to be reassigned to the testing team. So as I told, what are the purpose of the users of these things? Then choose the proper bug fixes deployed or there are sensors of reopening. 
since review was in place and helps us in analyzing the impacted area. And also, if even then, even after this, it was broken, then the QA comes up to the reviewer rather than the developer of this and gets the information from the reviewer in the first place and then goes back to the developer who fixes, who fixes the bug. So, the reviewer will be always be alerted and he has and he keeps the standards in place before reassigning the bug to the testing team. So, this ensures everything. So, as a part of the process, this is this plays a major role. So, once this has been done, the process continues. QA starts testing all the failed cases, retests, retests the past cases to ensure the impacted areas. He picks up the impacted, he makes some impact analysis and picks up the test cases that he needs to ensure that have been passed to ensure that no major breakage was have been placed because of the fixes that have been made by the developers. And once it was done, and also they ensure all the block cases have been executed, and once it has been done, the process continues, build one, build two, build three, and so on. And once there was no break, um, no major break here, and the completion of the sprint delivery date is not depleted, or it was coming for depletion, product owner comes up and takes up the proper decision to ensure no major break will be available in this as a part of this release. So he sees, he prioritizes the bugs and then he sets up the call, asks the dev team to release all the bugs which have been in Q1 and P2, ensures that all those are fixed. If there are any P4 bugs that have been left out, he ensures that the things are fixed in the next build by moving them, triaging them to the next sprint. So by this way, following a complete process like this, this ensures a quality bill. And now once it has been done, all the fixes have been completed, all the test cases have been executed and uh, done now, now the bill was ready for delivery. So now the next process that needs to be in place is that the BA needs to go and give a walkthrough for the product owner and the client support guy who are given the actual requirement and all the dev and the QA people in the place. So once it has been given, this walkthrough has been given, there is always a possible chance for the support guy to ensure or get a approval from this is to ensure that the guy who had given you the requirement verifies and ensures that whatever the things he was asking for has been delivered. So it is like getting an approval from the guy who had given you the requirements to deploy it into production. So this is the final stage of getting an approval from the guy who had given you the requirements is the client manager or the client server manager or the support guy who has given the requirements for us. So this is like almost uh, getting an approval from him into deploy for deploying the features into the production. So once it was done, the client, uh, the client manager or the support guy was very much satisfied with the changes, with the announcements done, and he gives a go for production, production deployment. And in here, once everything was done into production, also we need to ensure one more round. This is a major check. So why we need to go and do one more round in production? So how do we do in production? What we do in production? So in production too, we have a test setup wherein we have a test setup where we go and verify all the features at a high level that doesn't include any charges, that doesn't include any cards. Just to, just to ensure all the things are working fine as it is required as it is expected. So why we need to do this? So why we, the $100 million question, why we need to do that, what we ensure in reproduction, how come it fail in production? So there is some chances, a very narrow chance for those failures that comes up with build deployment failure or some bug fixes that have been missed out to be deployed in production. 
So at that point of time, there is always a possible chance for these kinds, these things to occur. So to ensure all these things are not occurring in the production, to help us stay safe. This is the process that needs to be implemented or incorporated even in the production. So one round, the basic sanity of all the features that has been delivered, also the functionality which is existing is not working. So this ensures high quality deliverable to the production. So this ensures everyone stays safe, client was very happy, support guys were happy, everyone is happy. So, and this is the complete process from end to end, from the start of getting the requirements, gathering requirements, and then deploying it to the production. So this is all the process that needs to be performed in order to achieve a highly deliverable, high quality deliverable built to the production to ensure high level satisfaction from the customers. So one more final point. So when there is only single environment that is available for development and testing, one more restriction should be in place. Developers should have only read-only access for the DB unless it is absolutely necessary. So what is the purpose or use of this one? Or this restriction? Many times we come across this one. When uh, we read about something that's related to the database, or uh, where it violates some foreign key or a primary key constraint. So developers analyze the data that is causing the real issue. And there is always a possible chance for deleting the data from the DB. Uh, that means they handle the data from the database rather than providing a proper fix or ensuring or analyzing the root cause of the issue. They just delete it. So in order not to be done like this, developers should have only really access to the database. In the first instance, when there is a single environment available for development and testing. Or one more thing can be followed, but it was not suggested. The DB backup had to be taken before giving it to the developers. So this cannot be done at always. So rather than that, developers should have a read only access for the DB. That is a safe game for both for all the guys. When there is a single environment available for development and testing. So this is all the process that needs to be followed and the process that not only QA but also the BA, but also product owner, that also dev, everyone in the sprint team, everyone in the team needs to follow and practice this once and only once they practice all the things, they put into practical working, only then there will be high quality deliverable that can be achieved unless until then there is always a chance of something other there coming up in the production. So this is the process that needs to be incorporated for high quality deliverable for achieving a high customer satisfaction. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thank you everyone.